those who have joined us and to those who will yet who, who is yet who are yet to join us this is transformation sanctuary international and we are both ministers we're both pastors of transformation sanctuary international i am victoria lawal um, and with me tonight uh, sorry with me this afternoon is vincent lawal vincent. so thank you so i've got pastor vincent with me tonight and we will both be talking about Parenting in the 21st century. We will yes. get there in a minute. But who are we? We are um, a church and we teach different, we teach people to be, to have victorious living and Christ likeness. We have Bible studies on Thursdays and, and our Sunday services where we teach people the word of God, where they, we dig deep into the word of God. And on days like this, we have events that we is used to empower people sharing knowledge, learning from other people, which enable each and every one of us to be victorious, victorious, you know, to, to live victorious lives. Remember that Jesus, it will be in a synagogue, it will teach, and then it will go into the community. And that is what we are doing um, today. Uh, like I said, we will be discussing um, a, a topic we have titled Parenting in the 21st Century, the challenges, the solutions, as well as support we can all we can you know the support we can get but we know that parenting is quite a broad topic but tonight we th this afternoon we'll be looking to cover aspects of it um and we will consider we are hope we hope to consider more sessions in the future about parenting but there is a caveat tonight i want us to know that parenting is either with when you have two parents um so children living with two parents um, as well as single people with lone, lone parenting, either the children are being brought up by their, by their mom or by their dad. And just to let you know that parenting is a lifelong, lifelong exercise. Yeah. Once you start, you don't finish until you get, go until you go to be with your maker. So it starts from, right from the bath, right until that child feels, you know what, dad and mom, um, I am able to stand on my two feet. And even at that, sometimes they still come to you for decisions. Yes. But I want I just want to talk about our background. We've been married for about 20 years, just short of 20 years. And um, we thank God for that. We are ministers of God, like I said, and we are both trained marriage counselors. Mm -hmm. So um, I know we've done sessions on marriages and all that. So we are both trained counselors. And by God's grace, we have two teenage boys who I believe are well behaved, <laughs> um, thankfully. <laughs> and also, it's just a, what, what, what is our experience? We learn from other people. We learn from other pastors. We go on University of YouTube. We watch different, you know, different recordings. We read books. We attend other events. So, for example, this morning, we attended an event which was uh, um, about children as well. And the title was taught by the Lord. So different, we, we look at all of these different experiences and we bring it together. And we've done quite a few research, which we will be talking about today. So that is just who we are, what we stand for. And tonight, honestly, it's going to be, it's going to be a wild time tonight. One of the things we always do as well, we interact. So we want this to be very, very interactive. And we want you to be able to when we ask questions. Please put it on the chat. If you, if you need to probably just give an input, just raise up your hand and we will call you. But we are hoping to finish about 6.30, just in time for dinner. So we, we hope to keep to time as well. So I think I have done enough talking. I'll pass over to Vincent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody, and good to see us all. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to come together again as your people. Lord, we are grateful for this opportunity as parents to rob minds, to talk about challenges, to talk about solutions, to talk about support, to talk about what you have in mind for us. Lord, as we discuss tonight, we pray for your presence. We pray for wisdom. We pray for help. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us. We pray that 
for every challenge or question we've got tonight mm. as individuals, Lord, you will provide answers to them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you for that um, introduction um, from where we started from. So I guess to give us an outline of what we'll be looking to cover tonight. Um, no, to give us an outline of what we're looking to cover tonight, um, we're going to lay a very, very brief foundation in terms of where it all starts from. And then we'll look at the challenges, the current situation. We'll use the UK as an example. And then we'll try to point to talk about challenges we all face as parents. And then we then go through those challenges for as many as we can today and find solutions or suggest solutions. And then we'll take solutions also and suggest solutions in terms of what we need to do. And then when we've done all of that, um, I can tell you straight away that there's going to be a part two to this, to this, to this program because you just can't cover everything about parenting in one session. Mm. So we're going to have a, a, a subsequent session to this and I'm sure even more sessions beyond that. So our intention is not to rush anything. Our intention is to go through things step by step, learn together so that at least when you're living tonight, it might be one thing, it might be two things, it might be three things which you just add to your arsenal of tools to raise wonderful children. I'm just going to start off tonight by putting one scripture, just one scripture, and that's in Psalm 127 verse 3. Psalm 127 verse 3. Three, Psalm 127, verse 3. And he says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is a reward. What that tells us is that God is the giver of children to us yeah. as parents. And we are just custodians. We are caretakers of these children. These children essentially belong to God. They come from him and they will go back to him. We were once children. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I start talking about my own childhood now, um, I can tell you how rough and how dysfunctional my childhood was well, a very, very rough childhood. I had, um, I always say, probably the greatest blessing uh, my parents gave me, but well, two blessings my parents gave me. One um, was the fact that I was born here in the UK. And second one, my mother introduced us to church when we were very, very young. I always say I was already in the choir at the age of seven and all of that from that time. Those were probably two key positive things I could remember about my childhood. Everything else was really, really dysfunctional. My parents separated when they separate ways. I lived with my mom for a while, then I lived with my dad for a while. And then um, I lived with my mom for five years, first five years of my life. Then I lived with my dad for three years, and then went back to my mom, lived with her for two years, and then she passed away. She died. And my dad didn't want us, not just me, my brothers too. So I had to be passed on to my uncle, who was of blessed memory, a hero to me, because he was the one who I knew as my biological, as my biological father. He was the one who raised me. We really had a good relationship, although within that, there were issues, there were challenges in the same, in the same family. So, um, like I said, we are just custodians. We are caretakers of these children. And we must bear that in mind that one day we'll give account to God in terms of what we did with these little ones or with these children. And I know yours might not be little anymore. Some of you would have, I can see daddy here, he's got children who, he's got grandchildren. And I know that. So um, I know 
for the people we're speaking to here, it will range from people with um, toddlers, one year olds, all the way to people who have had children who are who are now married. So that's the that that's the foundation I want to lay in all of this. That these children come from God, and we need to raise them how God will have us raise them. So how does God want us to raise them? God's plan is for parents to raise their ch children to be holy, three ages, holy, healthy, happy. That's what God wants us to do with our children. Raise them to be holy, raise them to be healthy, and raise them to be happy. And that's what we need to try to do. Raise them to be holy, raise them to be healthy, and raise them to be happy. Now, we're going to move on to the current context. So we know what God wants us to do, but we know there are challenges around that. We know it's not working. And how do we know that? Well, we've done our research and we're going to show that in a minute. So um, we've got a hand up. Um, is your hand up, Dikin? Is your hand up to say something? Or do you want to put it in the chat? Okay, all right. Um, we'll just we'll just go on. Um, if if you have your hand up, let us know. If not, just put it on the chat. Okay. So we we've, we've got a, a presentation like we normally do. In and, and thank you for that. Like we normally do with every event that we put together, we always look at what does the what does the uh, um, what does statistics say. But please pardon us if you are joining us from anywhere in anywhere else in the world. There are quite a few people on Facebook and as well as on the Zoom. If you are joining us anywhere else in the in the world, we normally use the UK as an example, which we believe some, sometimes represents what obtains in other countries, especially in the Western world and, and um, other places as well. So looking at the presentation, we, we when we look at the the statistics, household composition, household composition, composition. Actually, when when we when we looked at these um, statistics, I was quite I was quite shocked because I thought there was a report that marriage um, people who are married or children who live in households where people are married is is declining. Well, I, I believe probably is declined from the generation before us mm. to us. But this is the composition we have. So in 2021, there were 19.3 million families in the UK, which represents about 6.5 uh, um, increase from the last decade. That's from 2001, um, 2011 to 2021. So that has increased by 6.5%. So there are families, people who, children who live with both parents. In 2021 also, 3.3 million of lone parents um, account for about 15.4 of the families in the UK. So the total families in the UK, 15.4 of those families are children who live with lone parents, probably the father or their mother or, um, um, yeah, their father or, or their mother. And this, and it's a bit higher in um, southeast of England and northeast of England. Um, the number of families that include a couple in legally registered partnership so it could be a marriage or it could be in a partnership in the UK has increased. So that's that is something that we need to, to note. So we even though we've been we, we've been made to believe that families are going apart, but statistics show that actually it has increased by 3.7% in the past decade. And the number of cohabiting couples saw an increase of 22.9 over the same period. So people who are legally married have been increased by 3.7 million, while people who are cohabiting, so they are cohabiting and they are raising the children together, that's actually increased by 22.9%. So we will be looking at also parents in emotional distress. Yeah. I'll pass that over to you, please. So we can see that there's still, we, there, there, there are lots of families, with children living in them. I think we said there are about 12 million children 12 million. 12 in the UK, yeah. 12 million children in the UK. Now, you know, sometimes you wonder, okay, so why do we have events like this? And this is one of the one of the reasons, you know, when you work um, in an organization, 
you get to a point where you're told everything has to be evidence-based. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And this is a key evidence why we need events like this. Number one, around one in three children lived with at least one parent reporting emotional distress. So it means four million out of the 12 million children live with at least one parent who has reported emotional distress. So there's one parent who is that depressed or one parent who is, uh, has anxiety issues, has um, what other issues? Stress, stress, acute stress mental, health. mental health issues. Four million out of the 12 million. And then one in four, 25% of those have that, um, that, that condition relating to their mom. So 25% of children in the UK have a mom who suffers from anxiety, depression, mental health. One in seven live with a father who has that condition. And then one in 22 live with two, the two parents having or reporting emotional distress. So you can see that there's quite a lot of children who are living in this country where their parents are suffering. The parents have issues. And you know, the key thing here is when the parents have issues, it affects the children. The future of the children is affected because of the problems the parents have. And that's why it's so, diff it's so, it's so, it's so pertinent and important that we address these issues. Because if we're able to find solutions to those issues parents are having, then children can have a better life. Children can have a better future. So we can see from the statistics that it's a real problem in the UK. And this is just around mental health. This is just around stress. This is just around depression. We've not even talked about all the other issues and challenges which we are going to, which we're going to mention and, and discuss and discuss to, and discuss tonight. So that, that's that in terms of the start and where we are coming from, the context to having this discussion tonight. Okay. So I guess now we are coming to, so we've tried to lay a foundation where, who we are, what we stand for, why we are having this um, um, discussion. And we've tried to show from statistics as well that, you know, parents, Parents definitely are going through emotional distress. They, they have a lot of issues that they are going through and their children staying with this parent. And some of those probably are caused by the, lack, the, the fact that they are having challenges in mm -hmm. raising those children. Mm -hmm. But we'll get to that in a minute. You know, when we started looking at this, we thought, oh my, it's so broad. So broad. How do we streamline it, mm. you know, so that in every parent at your every level that you are, There's you something. are able to benefit from this. Yeah, yeah. So you, you may just be a mom who's just, or a, a, sorry, a parent, parent who have very young children mm. between zero and two, the toddlers. You may be the ones that are raising children you know, that are already going into primary school, secondary school. You may have, you know, so teenage children. You may have children that are actually grown, that started working. Mm. And paraventure, you are one of the very, very lucky ones. You have grandchildren already. Wow. And you're like, you know, that is, I guess that is where every parent wants to get to. Oh, yes. You know, to have grandchildren that you can nurture and spoil. You know what I mean? But we will come to that. So. One of the things we've identified is the stages of parenting. Mm -hmm. So we want to interact with you. So could you put on the chat, what do you think are the stages of parenting? Please people, we want you to engage tonight. So on the Facebook, on, on um, <coughs> Zoom, please type in, what do you think are the stages of parenting? What do you, what do you think they are? Just, it, just yeah. anything that comes to your mind, put it on there. If you can break parenting into different stages, what would that what would that, what look, would that like? look like? What would that look like? Let's see who comes first with an answer to that. Let's see. Let's see. What stages would that look like? Stages of parenting. Don't Google it. Don't, don't start now. Don't, 
Yes, don't yes. don't Google it just yet. <laughs> just let's see what comes to your mind when we talk about stages of parenting. Thank you, nurturing. Yes, thank you. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Childhood, Childhood and infant stage. Well done. Okay, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Okay. Let's keep it coming. So childhood and infant, infant stage. stage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I have one of our very uh, um, young friends that has, you know, that belongs to that childhood. And, and all she talks about is all those, um, all the children, children cartoons and all of that. And I'm thinking in my head, oh my, I've gone beyond that stage a long time. Okay, <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. So nurturing, nurturing yeah. was there. Yeah, thanks Katie, for that. Departing. Uh, departing from home. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a huge one. Yeah. yeah. Leaving home, gaining their independence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teenage, that is from a children's church teacher. Trust me. That is young adults. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Teenage. That's true. So, what have we seen so far? Uh, we've seen nurturing responsibility. <laughs> there are, people are typing on Facebook as well. Yes. Responsibility. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anymore? Preteen, young adults, young right? adults, yeah, discipline. Teach them to fly. Teach them to fly. Okay. Adulthood. When they get into relationship, oh yeah, that's authority. That's where parents panic, you know. Yeah. Adulthood, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Authority. Okay. Mood Thank change. You. Mood changing. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. That you know, that. Exactly. That's that's, well, um, uh, yeah, with the mood change, well, that that's always interesting, you know, when they're lively at some point and then they go quiet at some point, mm -hmm. yeah. and then our oh, decision making stage, yeah, of course, yeah, you know, a stage where you make the decisions for them, mm -hmm. and a stage where they make the decisions mm -hmm. themselves, and. And ultimately, a stage where they may need to make a decision, make the decision for you and all of that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. That's that. so, yeah. yeah. And all of it, everyone is right. Really? But yeah. um, what we are going to do, we're going to crystallize it into four stages. Okay. And all the four stages are C's, you know, and, and I'm sure each and every one of us on the call tonight or people that will listen to this, you will be able to identify which each stage. And just also to let you know that sometimes as a parent, if you have a child um, and you have a quiet age, age gap between them, you might be in, you might be using two different, you might be in the two different stages with of you. your life with mm -hmm. your children. Mm -hmm. So this is the what we call it, what we, what we crystallized it in, into. So the first one is called a parent stage is called the commander. commander stage. The commander stage. Mm -hmm. So you are in the commander stage. And this commander stage is very, very early in life. When they are very young, when they are still, all you say is, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't touch. Don't climb. You know, and all they do, sometimes they listen, sometimes they're naughty. But, you know, it's where, where a parent does everything, you would make all the decisions. Um, the school they will go to, the nursery they will go to, the child care and all of that. And, you know, you are you are so into that stage, you know, like I said, you have the whole, total ownership mm. of it. And you just, you, you, you know, you nurture them through that stage of very early in childhood. Yeah. And that, <clears throat> that, that stage we know is called the commander stage. Mm. All right. So I'll pass to, so let, let's, let's look at stage two. Yeah. So for stage two, then um, that's when they start going to school, you know, and we call that the coach stage. You know, now your role is, you know, up until that stage, you tell them everything. They've soaked in everything you're saying. Hopefully. But now they're hearing other things from other sources, too. Mm -hmm. They start attending schools. They start mixing with other people. They start getting other ideas. They're introduced to other concepts. And your role then is a coach, to be a coach, to begin to censor what's coming in into their minds 
and beginning to guide them to, okay, yeah, that's right. Yes, you can think about that. That's wrong. That's not correct. You need to think otherwise. That's what you do, you know, as a coach. The idea is not only to teach them, but also to begin to encourage their growth, you know, from direction to self-direction, mm -hmm. to, okay, what would you do? And I'm like, oh, I've got two homeworks. Which one should I do first? I go, do the English first before the maths. No, no. Which one do you think you should do first? Which one is more? Another. Which one is due in first? Which, which one, one is due? Yeah. Exactly. Which yeah. one is due which one in is first? Priority. Which one is priority and all that? Which one do you need to submit first? You know, actually getting the child to think and getting them to begin to make choices for themselves. So all you help them do is clarify as a coach. So they come in with all these ideas. And sometimes you've got ideas you've taught them at home and they've got ideas they've been they're taught in at school or they picked on the on the playground. If I, I've been told again and again, you cannot imagine how much information children pick up from their playground mm -hmm. in school. Either right or wrong information they pick up and they take as the gospel. They take as the truth. Mm. So if you are not invested in feeding them with the right information, guess what? They're picking up uncensored information on the playground in their schools. So you got to be, so you really, really have to be involved and all that and help them clarify, help them think. What, what do you think is best and all that? Oh, I've got a lesson. But I've got I've got an, I've got a school play or I've got an event to attend. Okay, how do you balance that? How do you manage that? Which one do you think you should do first? And just start allowing the ch the child make those decisions. So that's what you do at the coach stage, and that's usually true as you go to primary school and early secondary school. Yeah, yeah thank you. And and just to add to that, a coach is not someone who always, like uh, um, Vincent said, always provide the solutions. Unlike when we were in the command commander stage, we were the one providing all the solutions, right? And I remember I was at work on Friday and someone was talking about um, tooth fairy. Hmm. I'm sure probably some of us did. I did it for my, I did it to my children when, when they were young. So when a tooth falls out, We'll tell them, oh, the tooth fairy will visit <laughs> in the night. <laughs> and then they'll put their tooth, they'll put it under the under the pillow. Mm. And then in the night, I'll change it to a gold coin. Mm. But at some point, I couldn't do that anymore. You know, like the way some children were taught Santa Claus. Yes. And yes, at yes. some point, they get to know. So in the coach stage, what we do as a coach is we guide. <laughs> we don't always provide all the answers. We guide them. Mm. So the third C, which is the season i think some of us are in is the 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 oh probably we're still in coach and two and three probably yeah so we we're still in coach we're still in stage two and three the third stage is called counselor stage so they at some point they get to a stage where you don't give all that all that direction all the information they come they come to you to ask so dad, what should I do? Oh, mom, what should I do? Oh, auntie, we could be guidance. Yeah. You know, what should I do? How do you, how do I, how do I navigate this? So at that point, we, we are already losing that grip of we, I tell you what to do and that's what you must do. Mm -hmm. No, they get to that stage of reasoning. They get to that stage where they begin to choose for themselves. And what we can do to them is to become a counselor. Mm. They come to us for guidance, for direction. And it's, it's, they, they, have, they, they have moved from the level of dependence to being independent. Mm. And as parents, we need to recognize that. Mm. Sometimes we still believe that all we will do throughout their lifetime it's is the, to be a commander. It's the, it's the do this, stage. don't do that. No, mm. you're afraid, no, you know. And we, we, at some point, we need to be a counselor. Sit back. Sometimes we, we of course, we, I'm not saying sit back and let them do whatever they want to do. No, I'm saying sit sometimes, take a back seat, see how they are doing it and call them to order. 
begin to, you know, mm. give them counsel, just like when you go to a counselor, a counselor, a counselor says, so what, what, what do you think? Yeah. Try to get their, the reason behind their reasoning, mm. the motive behind their reasoning, and sometimes guide them in that direction until they get to the destination where they go. So commander, mm. coach, and now a counselor. Yeah. So we we'll move to the fourth stage. And you know, ju just to just to add a sentence to that yeah. counselor yeah. counselor stage, I think because of the complexity of human nature, you would have children who would even prefer for their parents to remain in the commander stage. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it, and I'm happy, and you're happy, and that's and that's good. You would also have parents who really really struggle to give up that commander role, mm. and all of that because it's just so. Don't you remember Empowering. those wonderful times where you just say, go and do this, and they just go and do it, do it, and life was so sweet, and life was bliss, mm. you know? But the key aim of the counselor stage is to train them to become independent. independent. What you don't want is when your child gets to you, they call you, dad, what should I have for breakfast? Mm. Ah, okay, something is not right at that time. So, as you, that's the whole idea of the counselor stage where you train them from being dependent. Sure. So you move from dependence to interdependence to you are moving them to independence. You want them to become, to start becoming independent in what they do. And the fourth stage then is when they do become independent and that's the consultant stage. You become a consultant pretty much to your child. And that's sometimes the most difficult of all the stages where, yeah, you, you call them, you, you, if I, you try to blackmail them. So you've not been calling, since they went to uni, you've not been calling me, you've not been, what's wrong with you? After all and all that. And like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they still won't call and all that. You have to recognize that these children are entering into adulthood yeah, yeah. and they are making their own decisions and you are there as their consultant. Hmm. They will dip in, they will check in and all that. And when they check in, you use that as an opportunity to influence, hmm. correct, show hmm. them the way and all of that. But you don't, you are not still holding on to the reins hmm. and all that. At that time, the best thing you can do, leave them in the hands of God, pray for them, pray for God's guidance. I remember the story one of my sisters shared with me. She said her son took up friendship with another boy um, when they were when he was in uni, and the boy was a distraction to him. This was a relationship or anything, but it was a distraction around what they believed, the values the family held. This boy was a distraction. And the uni was far, way, way, way out of London. So what would the mom do? Nothing. She went on her knees and she prayed. And she prayed and said, Lord, every distraction around my son, Lord, take away. The boy stopped coming home. After a while, he started coming home. And one day he just said to the mom, oh, my friend's relocated, blah, blah, blah. He's moved elsewhere. He's moved to another uni and all that. And the mom was just like, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you are a consultant at that stage, you, you, they, if you, and I always say, the little time they spend with you, you better cherish it. You, you don't complain then, because if you complain, the time will reduce this further, mm. and all of that. So give them something that will make them look forward to coming oh, home, yeah. look forward to, you know, sharing time with you, go on holidays, whatever you want to do. Mm. So those are the four stages. What's oh, the first one again? Sorry, being, being, being a commander, I, and I, um, I was listening to a YouTube um, session on parenting mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And like I did say at the beginning, one of the ways where we learn is YouTube universities. There are a lot of videos there, mm -hmm. honestly, that talk about that talk about every aspect of life. Yeah. You know, and we don't, we on this platform, we don't always say we know it all. No, no, no. We are not, you know, we learn from people, like you said, we learn from people, we learn from friends, we learn from events. Like I said, we still attended an event this, this morning. morning. Yeah. So yeah. we learn from different places and then we try to pull all of this together and share out of our own experience. You know, being a consultant, you know, you know so I was listening to this mess, uh, to this um, session on YouTube and he said, and the man said something which actually struck a chord. 
you know, and he said, you know what, if you are a commander all through the, the, the time your child is with you, mm. he said that child will not always want to come back to you. Mm. He said once they are gone, they want to remain because even when they come back, that you are meant to be a consultant, you are still trying to be a commander, mm. you know, and that, that speaks volumes. And he said, you know what, when you are at, that, at a stage when you are now old, and they now, they are the one that, that has the reign of power. Mm. Then they will command you. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, that was, honestly, oh, that was a line wow. that you said, because all wow. their lives, all they know is, is, to, to, is to be commanded. He mm. said, so when they come back to look after you, and I pray our children will look after us, you know, when we get to that stage. He said, when they come back to look after you, they, they can choose to be a commander. Mm. Mm. You know, so uh, and as parents, we need to think, you know, how am I raising my children? Yeah. Am I always commanding? Mm. Am I always coaching? You know, am I always, what's the counselor. title? A counselor. Mm. You know, they will always want to come back to a counselor. Somebody who sees the good in them, who counsels them. Mm. And remember what a consultant does. A consultant is one, a one-off. You know, you bring them in to solve a problem. And then they are gone again. Hmm. So I, I guess it's you know, just for us to think about. It's something for us to think about. And you know, and you know, there's a reason why we call them phases of parenting, you know, or stages of parenting. You cannot be a consultant to a child who is zero to five years old. Hmm. Clearly, that will not work. Yeah. I hope we all agree. You cannot be a consultant to a baby. No, a baby does not need a consultant. Somebody who just checks in once in a while and tries to find out how the baby is doing. That's not the way it works. You've got to be a commander, nurture, in love, of course, nurture that child. So that's why it's in phases. And also, I think you said this right from the beginning, you cannot treat all your children then, based on what we've learned so far. You cannot just say, this is my approach, approach to dealing with yes. my children. Yeah. And all that. So although you have a 20 year old and a 13 year old and a two year old, and you say, I treat all of them the same. No, 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 that's not going to work. You need to understand the face. You know what? Let's just do a quick exercise. Can people please put in the chat the stage they think they're okay, in? So what face are you in? You're a com commander. Um, just put it in the chat. A coach. Put, yeah. A counselor. Or um, a consultant. Yes, yes. What stage are you what in, are in you? your relationship with your children? And noting, of course, that it can be different stages. Yeah. Let's see. What have we got? What stage are you in? I think we have said we are. We are both. We are still in between coach and coach and, and counselor. counselor. Yeah. Coach and counselor. That's where we are. Counselor. Okay. Yes. I can see counselor and, and consultant. consultant. Okay. Okay, yeah, commander, yeah, we've got a commander in there. Okay. <laughs> oh, commander stage is probably one of the most common while I was growing up in my village. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. I, I, and I'm sure we will get there eventually when we say we've got to review how we were raised yeah. and look at how, with knowledge, yeah. how we should do things differently. Yeah. Some of us did come from a background where it was just command, yeah. command all through. Even when you were in university, it was still command. Mm -hmm. I remember a lady when I was in university, she was um, talk of the town in uni and all. Everybody knew her to be um, not of, let's just say not of a good behavior across uni. But anytime her parents are coming, mm -hmm. She just switches and changes and all that. And everybody sees that. But once they're gone again, she just switches back to her old, old behavior. We don't want to raise, we don't want to raise children like coach that. Coach and consultant, yes. Yes. Thank you. So coach and consultant. consultant yeah. yeah. Counselor. Counselor. And consultant. Yeah. Well. So you can see that you ha can have different, different approaches. You need to adopt different approaches to your children depending on on the ages okay all right um, so at least please remember the forces commander coach counselor, counselor 
And uh -huh. where we will all get to Cons is to become a consultant. And that's where we help them to become independent, independent yeah. isn't it? Yeah. To become independent. independent. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. This country impacts you. on us to embrace, embrace these this. approaches. That's very, very true. That's very, very true. That's Thank true. you, sir. That's true. Thank you. And um, so following on, um, we will be looking at what are the challenges that, you know, of parenting in the first 20, 21st century. What are the challenges that faces us in mm. this age? I'm sure we can name so many, but please, if you can put on the chat, we have some things written down, but like it's, like we said, we, have, we want it to be interactive. What do you think are the challenges that are facing parents in the 21st century? Some of the things that our parents didn't have to face because they were commanders, mm. right? So, but mm. that, that in itself has a bit of pros and cons, okay. right? All stages have a bit of pros and cons. Yes, it's coming yes. more, more, Social more, media. Please, let it keep coming. What are the challenges facing parents? Favorite. What challenges are you facing from, as, as, as parents? From, from toddler to adult to young adults. Yes. What um, you know, you know, think, you know, one of the challenges. I, I don't know if you are facing this one, but I am facing as a parent from this house. Should I? Should I tell? Go ahead. I should tell you one of the challenges. Okay, this is where you close your ears, people. And um, this is a private discussion. One of the challenges I'm facing is my children putting on um, what's this? Headphones. No, no, no. Look at what they're wearing. Um, this, uh, um house robe. House robe. 12 months in a year. How? Summer, winter, autumn, what's it called? Spring, and all that. It's always, they're always in this house. It's part of the, the, it's part of the that. Sometimes you don't see their faces. <laughs> you just pop at the pen. Okay, let's, <laughs> let, let's keep coming. Let's keep coming. And I think that gets me annoyed sometimes when I'm talking to them and you can't see their faces. I know. You can't see their eyes. I'm like, pull this thing back. But yes. So, yeah. but. I guess some of the challenges, let, let, let's read, says, I used to be a commander. Thank well, you, change, thank, thank you, but had to change, yeah. So some of the issues, the media. Media. Yeah, social media, finding, finding time, time for yeah. kids, that's yeah. true. The education system, yeah. work ethics, hmm. parents who, oh wow, <laughs> still coming, please continue to put it on. Parents who don't have support. Wow, wow. You know, especially when we talked about that emotional distress, yeah. mental health, parents themselves are struggling mm -hmm. and they don't have support. Or I, I'm sure we will look at the others anyway. Making communication. Phones. And priority. Phones. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Um, when, when you feel that you need to give advice and you are careful about saying it you know it's almost like you are treading on yeah, eggshells <laughs> you know with your own children i don't know what i'm going to say now that will mm. get them angry mm. and all of that you know it's like when i'm telling my son we're eating um, a particular type of, type food, of food and, yeah. that, and the, the way his face changes you just know <laughs> okay Cult, It'll be interesting yeah. cultural Cult, disparity yeah. that's so yeah. true yeah. that's a huge challenge how we were raised where we came from, our heritage, the current reality, what they see around social media, what it's telling yeah. them. Yeah. You are the hero. You are great. You are wonderful. All that is true, but you still need to work hard to make a future for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, social services, you know, uh, authorities from the government that's true be careful when you mention the police i won't say more than that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> authorities from from the exactly yeah from the government you know that uh the fear of social services is real in this wow. country so thank you parental discord, discord. Hmm. parental relationship discord. breakdown, relationship breakdown. Mm. And the impact it has on the child, the impact it has. I think I think somebody said earlier, children are sponges. They just suck, suck. in everything they see. They don't question whether it's right or wrong. They suck it in, and in future they go to re to 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 replicate replicate it, it unless God, except if God steps in. 
you know, and changes and changes the situation. Thank you for that. That's thank been you. really thank, really thank you, Hall. Thank useful. you. Thank for you. All of that. And and some of it we have listed here, which we will be talking about. But of course, we may not be able to cover everything today. But like we said, um, at some point we will have a sequel to this to this program because parenting is so huge yeah. that we cannot, you know, cram everything in an hour and a half. Program. So, yeah. but one of the things, thank you, the society ideology, that's mm. very true. That's you true. know, society, what does the society believe against what the what our, our beliefs as a yeah. family, yeah. our values, yeah. you know, and we will be taking this one after the other. I guess somebody mentioned time, <laughs> time constraints, mm -hmm. time constraints. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like in the 21st century, 24 hours is not enough for us. That's true. Especially if you're a lone parent and mm -hmm. there are lone parents out there who didn't desire to be a lone parent. Either they lost their spouse mm -hmm. or they had to emigrate or, or, or immigrate, yeah. you know, and their spouse is still somewhere out there. You know, so many, so many breakdown, relationship breakdowns. Everything in the family, lots of know? things can lead to that. Yeah. So when we, when we look at that time constraints, mm. what? How do we look? How do we? How do we resolve this? You know, so we said as a result of providing for for the family, mm. some parents <clears throat> tend to spend more time out, as well as traveling to mm. work, traveling to from That's and true. from work. You know, and it's not just here. I, I, you know, we were, in, we were in Nigeria recently, and I see the time my brother leaves home in the morning, hmm. sometimes 5 a.m. before yeah. everybody wakes up, he's out. And he doesn't come back until 9, 10. Wow. And I'm thinking, what? And once he comes back, he eats, and then he hmm. goes to bed. Hmm. And, the, and the cycle continues. Yeah. I'm thinking, how do you know your children? Hmm. What time do you spend with your family? And it's, it's the same even in Western world. Yeah. But thankfully, you know, we have some, some, some parents now that probably could have flexibility of working from home or around the children. Mm. But people spend qualitative time, less qualitative time at home. Mm. You know, sometimes we, we think that when we are home, some parents that probably work different shifts, sometimes they are home and they're, all they're doing is sleeping. Yeah. yeah they true. believe that they are home, but the children are still you know, That's left true. to their own devices, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's, so we may be home, mm. but we are not spending qualitative time mm. with those children. Mm. We said some spend time attending social events. Wow. Some parents are every week, they're out wow. every weekend. There's something happening there, you know, instead of, you know, spending time. So we spend time social events on TV, on the phones, on social media, traveling. Is it business projects? And consequently, these children are left on their own. So, 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 are you saying then that there's a difference between being around the child and spending time with the child? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. You can be home. Okay. And, uh, and not be. And not be. Wow. So you can be home. You probably you spend. I'm not saying the people on the call were just giving examples. Yeah, yeah, people spend course. time, you know, watching one movie to the other. Mm -hmm. They want to relax because they've been out walking. Mm -hmm. Some people, it's all, all the phones on the children. I have a friend who is on the on a call today. We can talk during the week and, and she knows. But sometimes when it's weekend, if we call, we say, oh, no, 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 you know what? It's family time. We mm -hmm. shouldn't be talking at this time because we are encouraging one another that the children are around you. Mm. The children are with you. The family is with you. Spend time with your family, mm. you know? And this is what we are meant to do. Uh, so there are time constraints. There are positives, positive, uh, um, sorry. So some of the time constraint could be caused by things that, things that uh, are well, that are meaningful. Mm. For example, you know, spending time to bring to to bring a source of livelihood income, to the yeah, income to yeah, the family, well, yeah. but yeah. there are others that we could actually think: mm. Should I be involved in this? Mm. Do I have to go to all the social events I'm invited to? Mm. You know, do I have to spend so long on on the phones that my children are neglected? But these are some of the solutions. So as we're talking about the time constraint, <laughs> um, about each challenge, then we will talk about you know what what solutions we think mm. are possible. You know, one of the things we wrote down, one of the things we noted is you cannot train a child 
without spending time with them. Mm. Some wow. of us, it's only when we go on holiday mm. that we spend time with our children. Mm. And at that time, they put on the best behavior <laughs> because they want everything, you know, that we can, that we can provide, mm. you know, learn to spend quality time. Learn, yeah. Let us learn to take interest in mm. what our children do. Mm. Children will adopt what you teach them mm. or what others teach them. Mm. Yeah, that's so you true. You know, while we are spending time on every other thing, somebody else is teaching those children. Mm. Either it's media or it's um, friends yeah. or it's anything. Their, their life is like we, when we used to talk, it's like a field. Yeah. It, the, the, the heart of a child is like a field. If you leave a bare field or a bare land and you don't plant anything in it, <clears> on it, <throat> give it two, three months, go back to it, and you will see that there are weeds on it. Yeah. That is the way the heart of a child is. Mm. You know, when we don't invest time, time. you know, to, to put in the values, mm. the standards, God's discipline. Bible says, train up a child on the way she go. Yeah. And when it gets old, they will not depart from it. Yeah. You know, children will adopt what you teach them mm. or what others teach them. Yeah. That's talking about time. And we're saying, even though the time, we may not have all the time in the world, let's create a routine. Mm. You know, let's have a family routine. You know, even if it's an hour, 30 minutes you have, spend it with the children. Take an interest in what they are doing. You know, take a holistic view about your short and long-term goals for the family, you know, and plan ahead. You know, raising godly children is very intentional. Yeah, yeah. And we need to, just like we give time to everything else, mm. we need to give time to our children. Mm. And lastly for me, before I pass over to Pastor Vincent, is we need to be a good role model to the children. Right. You know what? Yeah they see what we do. Mm. We can tell them, oh, oh, do this, or oh, don't do that. Sometimes, you know, some of the things our parents did, we are repeating them. Oh, wow. Except if we consciously yeah. decide not to do those things. Yeah. They do what we do, not mm. what we say do. Mm. Or So we, we have to be a role model. Like one of the things which we will mention at our next one is we had a meeting with the children with our boys and we're like what, what, what do you think parents should do better and one of the things they said is be a good role model you cannot you cannot not be a good role model and you expect your child to turn out right so let's spend quality time with our children thank you and i think that 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 first one actually um tick a lot of boxes even in terms of what we need to do with other challenges which we face and all that and thanks for Thanks for the additional um, comments, um, which was put in the chat. Um, um, in the influence of peer pressure on our children. Of course, that's another challenge. And I just love that quote there. Uh, but sister, love for children is spelled time. Love for children. How do you show that you love your children? It's not just by buying gifts for them. Mm -hmm. It's not just by giving them a hug. It's not just by giving them. So, so I work so hard to put food on the table, to buy you gift, to send you to school and all of that. No, I think this captures it. Love for children is spelled time. It might be time for correction. It might be time and for it should order. Not be time for correction. It might be time for conversation. Mm -hmm. It might be time just for laughter. It might be time to watch something together. I think in our in our own in our own house, um, most of the programs we watch on TV are children led. <coughs> Do that find a series which we all watch together, or they, they, there's a current teenage series on YouTube. I don't know, on Netflix, yes. which we are watching right now. Oh, of course, I could be watching something else. And I've seen some other things which I would love to watch, but I'm always like, I'm not interested in watching something on TV which my children cannot watch or should not watch. So right from when they were young up until now, and my boy's 15, up until now, everything we watch is Most led them. by them. Most, Most of what of we watch yeah. is, led, is led by them. But I can't think of I can't think of the Queen. Uh, the Queen's Gambit. Gambit. Yeah, the Queen's Gambit. Gambit. That was boring to them. Yeah. 
Uh, but everything else pretty much with him. So I, I, it's just spending that time, that time with them. Okay, you know, so this next one, I'm really going to ask for advice because we've got, um, we've got ideas which we can pull together on this one. And we don't have all the answers to this one. And this is the challenge with childcare. Now, again, because of the need to work, to bring money home, Sometimes there's just no time. Childcare becomes an issue. Where should we put our children? How do we balance between I'm working and yet all the money is going to the ch to childcare and all of that? So it's one which I think every parent faces, especially when your children are really, really young, and you have to and you have to go back to work. And sometimes parents will work different hours yeah. just to save money. You, you understand? So you're like, okay, maybe the work sheet work, one works during the day, the other one works at night and all that so that at least one person is with the child or the children. Uh, or, or the children. <clears throat> but the challenge with that sometimes is if you're not careful, that could even start bringing a vacuum, a vacuum into two parents yeah. raising that child together. And also even between in the relationship between the parents themselves, when they don't even get to be together as much as much as as much as possible. So can anybody, can anybody, if, if you have any ideas, what do we think are the solutions to, <coughs> to child care? What, what how have you resolved the issue around child care? If, if you have any ideas, please put it in the child. Uh, Leave, leave the, the children with grandparents. Leave the children with grandparents. Like okay. some of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 If you are blessed to have granddad or grandma um, come around and things like that, of course, that might be a very, very good option. But what, what this is a huge problem for a lot of people in the United Kingdom. If you have any ideas, please put it, please put it in the child. In, in the chat, uh, please put it in the chat. I think one of the things we do need to remember though with um, childcare is it's only for a phase. It's only a phase. It's only a phase. It's only for a period. And you need to think longitudinally, meaning think short-term, medium-term, long-term, before you make a final decision. One of the challenges I've seen and one of the mistakes I've seen parents make is around the fact that they have an issue right now. That issue is only for a short period of time, but they make a decision which affects the whole future around that little, around that little problem which they have. So they can like, um, um, I'm looking for, okay, we want a child to go to this particular school. We move to live near the school, but the child will only be at that school for a while. They're going to move on to secondary school. What then happens when they move to secondary school? You move houses again. What happens when they move to uni? You move houses again. You know, these are things we need to think. Well, these are things we need to think about. Um, okay. Yeah. So again, so shift work, like we said before, someone covers and then the other person takes over. And I think what's important is when they then go grow out of that phase, we then need to rethink how we want to continue to run our family. If that's not the best model, then we now need to rethink, okay, how do we go back to how things, to how things should be? Um, learn to engage your children in the little time you then spend at home. You know, you work nights, you come back during the day and you've got the children. You need to sleep. You've got other things you want to do. Remember, the reason why you're home also is to take care of that, is to take care of that child. So that really needs to be thought through. Um, if you have no support, stay up work till they are three. Well, I guess the way some people do that is they give back to their children, like um, um, back to back. For want of a better word, you know, give back to the children so they're all around the same age. And then you can take out that time, give back to them. And then you go through that phase once 
and then you can move on. You can move on from there. So think, thanks that, yeah. Change career, walk around the family. Exactly. Family move into <coughs> different phases. And we just have to be adaptable and flexible to make that work. Thank you. Thank you for and, that. And on that on that last point, I will want to say, yes, very honestly, when you are raising children, you can change a career. I I am um, I did that. And you know, I had to take up on a take a career from I was do, into engineering and I had to come, you know, retrain to be a, a housing professional. And I work, I worked locally just to be able to support the children, you know, pick them from school, drop them in school. And sometimes when we couldn't take them, you know, when when I couldn't pick them, you arrange for someone credible mm. to pick them up, which is I'm gonna to link to the second, to this um, third point, which is long parenting. Mm. You know, it's it's very That's difficult true. to be a lone parent, very difficult, but we know that by God's grace, you can, you know, people can do it. Seek yeah. support. It's, you know, like we said, lone parenting could be as a result of the death of a spouse. Mm. It could be, you know, relocating. It could be anything, but learn to seek support, mm. you know, from people that, you know, are very credible. You know, the fact that we are lone parents <clears throat> does not mean we should drop our children with everyone and anyone. Hmm. Gone are the days where you could leave children with people and you know they are safe. You know, nowadays there's so many things that is happening out there. You know, children being groomed, children, you know, being abused and all of that. And when, even when you leave your children with people who are, you know that, yes, these people, yeah, I trust them with my children, still sometimes turn up unannounced. You don't mm. always have to keep to a time. They know you are coming by child. <coughs> so that child has been dressed, you know, it's been looked after, it's been, you know, proper, mm. prim and proper by the time you arrive. Sometimes just come in unannounced to mm. check on your child, mm. you know, and, and so that you could see if there's anything that is, if that child has been abused or if there's anything you need to pick up, mm. you know, but let's learn to let, let's work with families who share same values parents to leave their children with people who they trust mm. and and always always make it a point of you know point of um, something you need to do that you always check unannounced checking unannounced mm. you know so that you will know how your child is being taken care of yeah i know and, 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 and i i i like rishani's comments there that sometimes it's not that straightforward and that's true because again, it's dependent on people's circumstances. <laughs> and you know, something came to my mind while my wife was talking there. And it's the fact that some of us came from uh, a setting where we were raised by the community. Uncles were there, aunts were there, people. So as far as I said, I, I came from a dysfunctional family. That was my nuclear family. That was my mom, my dad relationship. But they were, oh, they were on not hundreds, lots of uncles and aunts and all that who I lived with, who I moved in with, and all. If, I, if you look at my life from right from the time when I was born, it was almost like I was being passed from one house to another until I finally rented a room on the day I got married. That was that was, that was the first time I had accommodation, which was mine. So we don't have that community setting here in the UK or in the, Western or in the Western world. But that still doesn't mean that we can't find people who have who are of the same value as, as us. And I always say it's 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 sowing seeds, you know, it's what you sow, you reap. If you help others, others will help you. Some people would only come to you when they need help. Oh, can you please take my children? Oh, can you please have another? And they don't give back any credit. They don't sow anything back. So after a while, people don't want to help them. It's got to be a two-way street. Mutual. It's got to be mutual. You offer help, you offer assistance. Even the NHS, even the NHS suggests that you should form friendships with people who you can have. Let me take your children to school this week and you take them to school next week. Or let me take them today, you take them tomorrow. Or if you're really, really close, oh, my child can have a sleepover, and then your child can have a sleepover. Things like that. That's, but that has to be with people you trust, <clears throat> people, and people you know. Okay.
Um, so, well, this is another very, very interesting one, which a lot of people has, have raised so on the chat. This is the impact of social media, the digital age we are in, video games, internet browsing, being on the phone. Now, 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 remember that, 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got we've got our two children sitting directly opposite us, and guess what they are doing? They on are the on the phone. Yeah, even though they're doing a lot of getting things working and all that, they still on, on their phone. Phone. So you can say that is something we are also dealing with. So we're not talking at you; it's something we're all going through. So, what are the solutions to social? media to so this social media it's got its advantage okay that's fine it, it's got social media has got its advantage it's a wealth of information and knowledge you can learn things very very quickly youtube can either be a university to make you wiser or it can make you dumb really really dumb and it can derail a, a life a life and all that what are the solutions in terms of social media use of phone and all that please put it in the chat whilst we talk about some of the ones we think parents need to do you know advancement in technology um, often means children are on their own you know in front of that video game trying to score that goal or driving that car or they have that ninja who's fighting and all that and the fighting just never ends and it never stops mm. and all of that and, and sometimes like somebody said uh, the social media mm -hmm. and our phones they are like babysitters for us you know even little children even little children you just okay i have a confession i have a confession to me we carried a little a little daughter <laughs> on sunday we carried a little daughter oh, and we were taking her somewhere and we needed her to stay still we needed her to stay still. Uh, what did we do? We just opened a nice YouTube video. What, what was it you opened? And all that. Yeah, Coca Melon. Oh, Coca Melon. Melon. Yeah. You know? And she just watched it and all was well. That is still social media, isn't it? So, okay. So, Sakechi said some parents use social media far more than kids this day, exactly. That is part of the problem. That is part of why we're not spending time with them. Some of us are always on the phone. You are, so you are ending one call, you are on the next. Mm -hmm. I'm just checking on you. How are you today? So tell me how your day has been. When did you wake up? When mm -hmm. did you leave home? What, which train did you cut? Did you rain mm -hmm. on the way and all that? And your child comes to you and just say, oh, yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. And you know, children, children are very, very wise. I don't know if you've noticed, your child will sometimes come if there's something they really, really want and they don't want you to say no. They will come when you are on the phone. Yep. That's when they will come and say, can I have this thing? And because they know you're on the phone, you just go, yeah, 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 you can have it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. These are things we need to, these are things we need to think about. Our children are on Snapchat, they're on, they're on they're Instagram, on. They're, on, they're even on do you know how many platforms they are at, which we parents don't know, which our children are on? My son was watching something on, uh, on, the, on the home computer a few months back. And I said, is that YouTube? No, 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 it's not YouTube. It's blah, 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 blah. And he just spoke that IT blob, which I didn't understand. And I just had to nod my head as in, you know, try to show that I was, you know, I was, I was like, oh, oh okay, oh, yeah. I had no clue what website that was on. However, what did I do prior, way before that? We have BT, BT Wi-Fi. BT Wi-Fi allows for parental control. So you decide that um, websites with this kind of images and things like that are not allowed on the Wi-Fi. Wi so that filters out a lot of things which they cannot access anyways. I think that's one good thing we need to do. On mobile? On, On mobile. mobile. So okay, can, yeah. yes. You have monitoring apps. 
And you know, people talk about monitoring spirits. They are monitoring apps too, and they're like spirits, you know? Um, I'll give you an example. <laughs> Remember when the queen died? I don't want that. Yes. And my son. My, so we have a monitoring app. We have a monitoring app at home, yeah. On, a, on, on, a, on, on our mobile, which monitor? Yeah, exactly. Mobile? And my son, we were all watching it and we're feeling sorry that the queen had died and all that. And they said the queen was going to be, the queen was going to be buried. So my son then, my son then tried to search online on his phone in terms of what type of coffin will the queen get. And I got a red alert on my phone. Your son is searching for coffins, you know, and all that. And that's because of the monitoring that's because of the monitoring app of the thing. So you have apps like Kids Log, My Spy, Next Nanny, and a few others. Also, setting boundaries and time. Hmm. How much time <clears throat> can they spend? Our children need nine hours of sleep <laughs> every day. When you're commander stage. Nine <laughs> hours of sleep they need. And they don't want to, even though it's good for them. They don't want to. If I leave my son, my son can stay awake till 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and all that. And you still go to school at 6 a.m. It's not a problem. But if he has an opportunity also, he would like to go to bed at 2 a.m. and wake up at 2 p.m. You understand? So we have to help them. When they need to sleep, they need to sleep. So they don't spend all their time watching, watching, uh, being on social media. So one... As parents, we need to look at how much time we are spending on social media. And then two, we also need to look at how much time our children are spending on social media. I'm sure we had the unfortunate event of that 14-year-old girl yeah. dying five yeah. years ago. And that was because she was exposed to so much and her father and her parents weren't aware yeah. until it killed her, what she was exposed to. And she cried out for help via social media. Um, Hmm. nobody picked it up and i think you know somebody put on the chat that you know let's sometimes even if it's just you know once a while once in a week twice in a week you have dinner together where hmm. you know you put phones aside i know for the for families is different dynamics but you know when we talked about the time constraints i think it, it will be very intentional hmm. if we create time to spend if we create time as you know, to, to spend time as a family. And yeah. it begins from the parent. Mm. If you're too busy for the children, trust me, they, they, will, they, they, they have things that will fill their They'll time. Fill their time. You That's know, so and true. talking about, you know, the, the, the impact of digital age, some parents, you, we, are not, we are not educating ourselves. Mm. You know, somebody said, oh, Facebook. They say, oh, what is Facebook? You know, you, are you thinking this day and age? We know you don't know what Instagram, you don't let's try to educate ourselves. Mm. We may not know, and, and these same children that uses this these different apps and different platforms, they can teach you if mm. they are your friend. Mm. They may not teach you the whole thing, but we can learn as well. Let's evolve with time. Yeah. Let's not just oh, oh, oh he's, he's on he is on his phone or she's on her phone, and you don't know what they are doing. Mm. And not trust me. Even with all the boundaries we've set, sometimes they find loopholes. Of course. But at least we 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 have taken an interest in what in, in what they are doing. Yeah. So that we will not, you know, like we said at the beginning, they are the, they are the heritage of the Lord, and we will give accounts of them. Yeah. You know of how we taught them. So let's take interest even in in developing ourselves as parents. And I, I guess one of the other things that was mentioned, you know, that a lot of people, you know, the tension between the family values and societal values, and mm. that, that will have an impact on our children. Children are taught things in school. They are taught, I remember when my son was in um, primary school and he used to come home and every night he would be so scared to sleep. He was having nightmares. And I was like, and when he said to us, he said, oh, I'm having nightmares. I'm like, what is it? He said, oh, there is a book in that yeah, our really teacher is. read in class. Yeah. And the book is about witches. Yes. And it's a big book. Yeah. He said they, they, they read it through, I think, for 
probably six weeks of the old term. Yeah. So when they are having that particular <laughs> subject, the teacher read that book about witches and it was having nightmares. It was. And I went to school and I called the school and I said, sorry, can my child be exempted from this class? Yeah. You know, I said he is having nights. We actually went to the school. We went to the school to the and, school, and they said, "Oh no, yeah, that that book is part of their curriculum. It's about witches and how witches operate." And I'm thinking, what on heart? How witches operate? Why would you want to teach my child that? But anyway, we we asked the school that any time it is they are teaching that they they they're reading that book, it should be exempted. But not exempted doing nothing. So they they still was engaged in was given another read. book to read, and we need to take time to know that how does these societal values, mm. especially if it's impacting upon on your child, yeah, you know, if uh, how do we resolve them? One other thing is education begins at home. Mm. You know, if we spend time with them, let's teach them our values. Yeah, this was all Abraham did. Abraham taught his son Isaac how to know God. And even God said to Abraham, he said, I know that Abraham will teach his son after me. After me. Mm. What are your, you may not be a Christian. There are people are invited today that are not Christian and they're on this platform. But you have family beliefs. You have family, you have, you have standards in your family. Teach your children this, mm. the, these values. Let them know that, you know, yes, society may believe something else, especially now where even in children cartoons, you see, you see uh, um, people the, of the same sex kissing one another in children's cartoons. Teach your children your family values. Let them know their heritage. Mm. If they are, let them know the heritage. Let them know that this is what we believe in. One one thing I like I like about um, um, about Muslims is or even Asians, whatever they do, they teach their children. We sometimes, especially we color people, we tend to or Christians, we tend to try to exempt our children. Oh, they, they, they are still young. Mm. Oh, they are still this. Mm. And we don't teach them early enough. Mm. Trust me, while you are not teaching them those values, or they are being taught other something things. Else. They are, like we said, their mind is like a sponge, yeah. absorbs a lot of information, mm. both spiritual and physical and every other thing. Mm. Mm. You know, let's take an active interest in what the school teaches them. And you have a right to exempt your child from being taught about something. You know, you have a right. So don't, don't always follow, you know, uh, um, whatever the school says. Oh, we are doing this. And it's no, 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 no. You have a right. You have a voice. You mm. are the parent. Mm. And lastly, I'll say, attend. how many of us as parents attend parents' evenings? How many of us attend events in schools? Mm. And even when we go for the parents' evenings, they say, oh, your child is doing well. Oh, okay, thank you. You are not asking question. In what in what in what in, does doing, what well, does doing mean? well mean? By what standard? By, that's the word. Thank you. Mm. By what standard? By whose standard? By whose standard? So if you say, "Oh, my child is doing," especially in a country like ours, either the child is at the at the tail end of the class, they, they all they get all promoted. Doing, and they all doing well. It's not like when we were raised that if you are if you if you if your position is um maybe 40 out of the class of 45, you will repeat that class, mm. you know, and we were taught the other way. But here, they just move them on. Yeah. Take an interest, ask the teacher, how is my son doing? How is my daughter doing? Ask questions. Mm. If you see a teacher that you're they probably- top grade? Middle grade, middle grade, grade. Middle grade. where are they? How mm. do you support them? Mm. You know, and, and, and sometimes when your children come home and they say, oh, this teacher doesn't like me, or that, that teacher is speaking on me. Mm. All we say is, as a commander, you two, what are you doing? Mm. You should be listening in class. No, ask the child. Tell me how many times. Tell me how this teacher is speaking on you. And you can go back to the school to say, you know what? This is the trend I've noticed. Actually, that happened in my son's primary school as well, the older one. He has two, two English teachers. So, and they take turns. And usually when this other particular teacher comes in, he, she always gives a bad report about him. And I went to school and I said, but two teachers are teaching him the same subject. How come it's only when you are teaching him that you pick on him? I said, I just need you to know that I've not had any report from any other teacher and your, and your colleague as well. And that made it, you know, that teacher was, that teacher took it to her that, you know what? I, I won't just say, oh, this child is not behaving well. And I, as a parent, I'll take it to client and sinker. No, investigate. Be friends with your child take their interest into heart. So I guess 
for me really teaching societal values it begin from it begins from when they are young teach them your value mm. what them do them we stand for exactly. as a family yeah. and teach them yeah. godly yeah. values yeah yeah thank you wow. thank you thank, thank you thank you for that and you know if, if i may add anything to that i don't know for um th this is specifically for those of us who are not caucasians on on, on this call um there is there is there is a wider issue around discrediting our heritage, where we come from, who we are, who, what we believe, and all of that. And we have to work against that. The jokes are always on us. Even jokes by Black people are about their own parents and their own heritage. Ah, this is how my Nigerian mother speaks. Ah, this is how my Jamaican mother responds and all of that. And we don't know that in discrediting that, in discrediting what our parents are doing, our children are feeling that culture is not good enough and we need to embrace this better culture we have found ourselves in. And we have to educate our children that that is not that is not right and yes like i said black people might be making money out of that because when you tell the joke as a black person and you discredit your own heritage other people will laugh and they won't feel bad about it because you said it and all of that but the truth of the matter is you just keep pushing back the progress that we are meant to make together as um, as, as 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 a community you are pushing it back every day. And this thing, you see, you see it everywhere. Go pick out the top black comedians in the world and listen to their jokes. Often, even those who have never been to, those who have never been to Africa or to Asia or whatever, they still have jokes to tell about what people do there, how people do things and all that. How often do you, do you hear things like, oh, you know, when I was young, all my parents, if you are not a lawyer, you're a doctor or you're an engineer, if you are not that, then, then there's no future and all of that. Did our parents always get it right? No, but the value they placed on education is the reason why we are where we are today. <laughs> and now we are raising a generation who are believing that all the education you need is YouTube. Hmm. Bill Gates, he dropped out of school. He, beca he became a millionaire. Um, Elon Musk, he didn't finish whatever, whatever, he became a millionaire. And our children now think all you need to do is just get followers on YouTube and make money, and that's all you need. That, that's yeah, that in itself it's good, but the foundation, the foundation. Yeah. I always say to my children, the person who knows why will always be the boss to the one who knows how. YouTube may teach you how. But only good education will teach you why. So the foundation has to be strong, and then they can go on to become whatever they choose, whatever they choose to become. Anyways, um, the joke is always on us, but we've got to be careful. I think we have covered quite a few things, and there's still many more. And but I think we'll probably have to re, re um, keep the rest for the next for the next session. Um, the final conclusion, because we're mindful of time, the final conclusion we need to think about today is exactly where we started from. Children are God's heritage. Our children belong to God. We are caretakers. We are custodians. We've got them for a finite period where we can influence them in a way that will better their own future and also, in a sense, help our own future too. None of us want to have children who will leave home and never look back. None of us. So, if we are struggling with raising our children, one of the key things we need to do again is go back to God in prayers. Rebecca was pregnant. She had been waiting 20 years. When she eventually got pregnant, it was uh, Rebecca, in the Bible. Rebecca in the Bible. 
It was a stormy pregnancy. It was turbulent. And one day she just said to herself, if this is meant to be the joy, what I've been waiting for for 20 years, why is this so turbulent? And what did she do? She went and prayed. And then God told her, you've got twins. You know, there was no, there was no, there was no scan at that time to know whether it was two or three. And the world was still young then, probably sort of the first set of twins humanity would have. God told her, you've got twins in your womb. And this is why they're struggling. And that comforted her and kept her. So when we're struggling, let us return to our maker. You might be saying something to your children today, and it looks like they're not listening. Let us Pray return to our Pray. maker. Pray, Pray for, for them. them. Pray for them. Pray with them. them. Yes. Pray for them. Pray, Pray with, with them. them. Engage them. Mm -hmm. Speak with them, not at them. Not to them. Speak with them. You know, when I'm collecting my sons, when I'm talking to them, I'm like, I stop at a point and I'm like, talk back to me, please. Tell me, tell me. Am I wrong? Am I thinking? Do you think I'm thinking weird and wacky? Do you think everything I'm saying is irrelevant? It's nonsense. I want to know what, what you, you think. are thinking about what I am saying. And I let them talk back. It, it's the taboo of a child should never look at the parents in the face. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. You will struggle with employment in the UK. <laughs> uh, can't talk back. You'll just be seen as uh, uh, easy to please or easy, what eager to please. Commander. It will stop your promotion. The culture here is different. Teach your children to reason back, reason together. Yeah. Even God says, come. come, let us reason together. So that is something we also need to do. But a lot of these other things were packaged for the next session. There are a few challenges that which we have not touched. Uh, fashion. Things like fashion, fashion mm -hmm. favoritism, financial, financial challenges, challenges yes. health challenges, parental styles. Oh, man, that's, that's a, that's a that's massive one. And all that. And even feedback we receive from our children in terms of how they think we should be raising them. But all of that will package for the next for the next session for the next session. We hope you found uh, this session useful. Sorry, Anything can more? we? One thing we always do before we just round up um, is we always try to ask you, what have you found useful today? Today, what are you taking? What away? are you taking away as a person? Like we said, some. You know, you, you've listened to probably different speakers, you've been to events and all of that, but there's always something new to learn mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. something new. Please, if you could just, you know, communicate back with us. Yeah. What do you, what are you taking away as a parent? Somebody already, already said he used to be a commander or he or she used to be a commander, but they will no longer be a commander. Probably they'll be a coach or a, you know, a consultant. Please, is there anything that you have learned today, something useful that you are taking away? And while we put that in the chat, um, we will, like we said, always, God gave us children. If there's anything that is out of shape, that is not in line, let's take it back to God. Let's keep praying. That's there's awesome. no, there's no place where they get to that they, you, they don't need prayers. Mm. Let's keep praying for them. Please, just to let you know, like I said, this is, um, so thank you everyone. Keep putting it on the, what are you taking away? We'll talk about it. Less commanding and more engagement. Thank you. Um, what else do we have there? Um, the stages, thank you. Yeah, so the different stages, the commanding, the what, how we can get help, how we can get support. There is a lot of support out there, but like we said, we will be we will be having a sequel to this. Early next and, year. And the support, um, there, there's some, if you just Google family support sometimes, and if you feel you need to speak with us, yeah. please let us know. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, I am, Pastor, please type in our, um, your email on the chat or number. If you feel you want to speak to us about anything, you want us to, you know, go through anything with you or you want to discuss, please, like I said, we are trained counselors, we can speak with you. I'm not saying we are trained regarding children, but we can point you in the right direction or signpost you to who can help. Um, like I said, this 
is the brought from Transformation Sanctuary. This video is on you on Facebook. If you want to, if you want to send it, the send it to people, the link to people. You can go on our page, Transformation Sanctuary, and go on it to to listen to it over and over again. So it will be saved on Facebook. Please feel free to share. Um, our Sunday messages as well on YouTube, and it will be saved on YouTube on Transformation Sanctuary page yes. on YouTube. If you search for Pastor Vincent Lawal Transformation Sanctuary, you will be able to get um, um, the links, or you'll be able to forward it on. And our past events are there too. Are there as event. well. And like I said, we will have future events. We will definitely have a sequel to this. There was so much we prepared that we couldn't even cover. But we want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who's made today a success. We hope you have learned something. We hope that as we journey together in life, yes. we pray that, you know, all our children will turn out well. Amen. We pray that our children will not bring us sorrow. Amen. Like Esau did to his parents. Mm, oh you know, wow. one of the things I wanted to mention at the beginning mm. is that this was born out of the Bible series we've been doing in church. Yes. Um, yes. Looking at different parent type parents in the Bible, in the Bible. and this was born out of, out of that. Mm. So we pray that our children will turn out well. Amen. We pray they will not destroy our legacy and Amen. our values. Amen. And we want to say thank you again to everyone who's attended tonight. Thank you. And I don't know if you have anything else to no, say. No, no, no. Thank, thank you. And like I said, like we said, there will be a sequel to this early in the new year. We look forward to hosting you again. And thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. God bless you and have a good evening. Have a good evening. God bless.